Good afternoon and welcome to the final webinar in our Governor of Victoria Export Awards application support series. Today we're going to be looking at the final part of the uh, application, namely international business planning and direction. And we're also going to uh, look at the sort of images that you need to provide as part of your application. I'm Collins Rex and I'll be your presenter for today's session. For those of you um, who have joined us in previous webinars, welcome back. And uh, for new attendees, I hope that uh, you'll find some benefit from today's session. Um, and just to let you know as well that all the previous sessions as well as today's session have been recorded and they will be made available on uh, the Trade Victoria website. So if there's anything that uh, you need to recap, you can listen to the recording and um, hopefully that will give you all the background information you need. So let's look at where we're at um, with today's awards uh, session. Just to recap the awards process, it is a two-tier process. You enter through the Governor of Victoria's Export Awards. If you are a winner at one of the 13 national category levels, you automatically become a finalist in the National Export Awards, which for this year is being presented for the 56th time. You can only enter one way, and that is to make your way up through the Victorian Awards or through one of the other state-based award programs, and you only have one application for both awards. So you don't need a separate application form for the nationals. We use the same one in both programs. There are the 13 award categories at the national level. So if you are a winner at any one of these category levels, you automatically become a finalist in the National Export Awards. Um, I have mentioned this before, but just in case you've not heard me say it, you can enter in more than one category, but you can win only in one category. You can be a common D in more than one, but you can only win in one category. So tick the boxes carefully, choose the categories in which you think you have most chance of success. If you are in a sectoral category, such as agribusiness or education and training, you may also want to consider one of the cross-cut categories like e-commerce, regional exporter, small business and emerging exporter. Regional exporter, if you're not based in metropolitan Melbourne, Small business, if you have a turnover of less than $5 million annually. E-commerce, obviously, if you do most of your trading online. And emerging exporter, if you have been exporting for three years or fewer. The Victorian specific categories, the Victorian Exporter of the Year, which is drawn from the 13 national export uh, categories. So the winners of those categories then are separately judged by a judging panel that chooses the exporter of the year. The Victorian Export Award for Innovation Excellence, you cannot enter specifically for this one. The judging panel puts forward those companies they believe have done exceptional work on an innovation front. So make sure that you emphasize your innovation from the beginning to the end of your application so that you catch the attention of the judges who will then put you forward for this award. And this award is then judged again by a separate judging panel. Victorian Women in International Business Award, please do consider entering for this one if you have an exceptional woman driving your export business. This one is the one exception where you can actually win two because much as um, all the other categories are company-based, this particular one is individual-based. So you may win for your company in the e-commerce category, for example, but a woman can win in your business separately because she will be acknowledged in her own right. So bear that in mind and you will have to provide some additional information if you want one of the women in your business to be considered for this International Business Award. Five sections in the application, the executive summary about the business, its products and services, international business strategy, business management, which includes financial management and data, and the section of the application that we will be focusing on today, namely international business planning and direction. As you can see, four of the five sections have 
an award score attached to them. The first one, the executive summary, has no points, but we've talked about the importance of that particular part of the application. All the others have a score, and today's has a score of 10%. Throughout your application, please understand what you do well, what your competitive advantage is, emphasize that throughout, but present it in language that the judges can understand. So don't use jargon, don't use technical terminology, and if you do, explain what it means, please. So let's get straight into today's session, which is uh, just going to be a short one. Session number five, Question number five, the international business planning and direction of your business, which is worth a 10% weighting of your score. This is a very important question, even though 10% may seem relatively low compared to some of the other scores. This is very important because up to this point, everything that you've put in your application is looking backward. So you have put in information pertaining to your business over the past 12 months, or when it comes to figures over the past three years. So you've talked up to this point about what it is that makes your business great today and what you have achieved over the past 12 to 36 months. Question number five, however, is a forward-facing question. This is the question that the judges want to see to prove that your export business is a sustainable one and is one that is going to be continuing beyond this day. So in this question, you need to demonstrate your business's commitment to international trade. That means you need to provide an insight into the future direction and the forecasts of your international business activities over the coming 12 to 18 months. So these are the things that you've already got in your business plan that you've got thinking about, and this is what you need to explain to the judges. So in the 200 words that you have available, you need to explain, for example, about any new markets that you are exploring, what they are, where they are, and why you're considering those markets. Very important always to have some aspect of the why and not just list a whole bunch of markets. If you're investing in R&D, you absolutely want to be mentioning it in this question. If you're launching a new product or service, this is where you want to make sure you mention it. Also make sure that in that process, you have some background as to what it is you're doing. Make sure that you keep it sorted and you have it logical as to why you're investing in these new products and you're launching these new products in particular markets. If you're launching into any strategic partnerships, if you've signed any new distribution agreements, please make sure that you talk about those here. If you have any changes in your production or your supply, this is where you're going to be mentioning it. If you have new staff that you've employed to help spur your export growth, absolutely mention it here. So anything that you have in place to make sure that your business is going to keep growing on an international front, this is where you highlight it. You want to make very, very sure that you emphasize it. Remember, the judges are looking for sustainability. They're looking for growth. They're looking for strategy that underpins your export business. It's not a great look if you win an export award this year and next year you're no longer exporting. So the judges want to see that you've actually thought through what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it, and that you intend to be committed to your export business going forward. So that brings you to the end of the written application component of your business. The sixth component is purely where you're going to be uploading images. Now, you need to upload logos, photos, and so on that reflect your business's products, your culture, your community. The reason you're doing this is not to show the judges more about your business, but so that there's a shop that can be used for publicity purposes if you win. 
So make sure that you don't send in any corporate headshots, please. Uh, you know, the CEO of your business might be delightfully good to look at, but that's not anything about your business. So product shots, shots of your factory, of your manufacturing business. If you're a game developer, maybe it's a screenshot of your most successful game, etc. You can upload a JPEG or an EPS, remembering that the image you upload needs to be of print quality because it will be used for Australian Export Awards promotional activity. question that I'm often asked um, when I talk about this section of the application is, are you able to upload supporting documentation such as brochures, etc.? No, you cannot. Your application stands on its own merit. It's just the written word. The only thing that you can upload here is an image that will be used for publicity purposes if you win the award. Um, what you see on your screen there are some examples of the sorts of images that would be good ones to use. Um, so production facilities, um, what machines actually look like in terms of um, the, the top right hand uh, corner of your screen. That is a GP grader product, which is a cherry grading machine. So it, it gives a good sense of what the product is all about manufacturing facilities, etc. So you want images that clearly show your business and that can speak on your behalf in publicity shots, etc. Just reiterating those key dates, the closing date for the Export Awards is Thursday the 28th of June, that's 5pm close of business. Please lodge well in advance of that time and preferably well in advance of that date. You will be lodging online, so bear in mind that things could go wrong, technology doesn't always work as we hope it will, and you may not be able to lodge if you haven't allowed enough time. And on that note, I just want to pause for a moment. Um, yes, it is an online application process. You're going to complete online, lodge online, but what I suggest you do is before you get to that point, download the application form, complete it in Word, socialise it, get second opinions, for goodness sake run a spell and grammar check on it, make sure that you're happy with your application in that form and then cut and paste the various sections back into the online form and lodge it at that point. It's a lot easier to do the socialisation if you've got a little bit of time and you've actually got it in a document that you can circulate then cut and paste it once you're happy with it. And once you're happy, don't mess around, get it up there, get it lodged. The Victorian Awards Ceremony happens on Friday the 14th of September. All applicants are invited to the award ceremony. So if you've applied, you'll be invited to attend. It's a fabulous night. Um, not only do you potentially win an award, but you also get to have a bit of a sticky beak at Government House, meet the governor, and of course, it's a great networking opportunity as well. It's an evening that starts relatively early and it's over by 8.30. The National Award Ceremony is on Tuesday the 4th of December. If you're a winner in one of those 13 national categories, you will be invited to the National Awards Ceremony as well. And again, that's a great night and obviously then you get to network with other exporters from across the country. So make note of those dates. Very important, closing date and then the two award ceremonies. Your contacts for the Governor of Victoria Export Awards from a technical perspective. So if you have any questions uh, about your application, particularly application technical sort of things around lodgement, um, getting onto the, the website if it's not working properly, etc. If you have general questions about the application, you need to be contacting the Department of Economic Development, Jobs, Transport and Resources, who at the state government is the department in charge of the export awards. Your main contact is Carol Tobolov, and you see Carol's contact details on the screen. Carol will be able to assist you with any of those niggly issues. If Carol isn't available, feel free to speak to Fiona Cheng, and again, Fiona's details are on your screen. Carol is also a very important contact. Um, should you need further assistance with actually completing your application? So if you want help with how to phrase something, where something fits in, what you leave in, what you leave out, etc. 
Carol is also keeping a schedule of one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions that I will be running. So if you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, speak to Carol and she can lock that in for you. She's got the availability and she knows where there are sessions available. Um, and this is where you apply. So go to exportaward.com.au slash Vic. Online system, all the states and territories feed into the same system, all have the same application form, all have the same criteria. Some have specific individual categories as well, just as Victoria has those three specific categories, but everybody has the same 13 national categories with the same entry criteria. If you have a quick question about your application, you're more than welcome to send me an email, and that's my email address on the screen. I will endeavour to answer it as close to uh, immediately as possible. Um, you've also got my other contact details there. I can be really difficult to catch on the phone, so I suggest if you do have a question, shoot me an email. The email will find me wherever in the world I am, and I'll be able to answer that. If, however, you want a more intensive answer to a question, something that's going to take more than just a quick email, then by all means speak to Carol about getting some one-on-one -on -one coaching time and she'll be able to schedule that in for you. So I'm going to flick back to uh, the contact details for Carol and Fiona. Just as we end today's session, they can help you with that one-on-one -on -one coaching time and any of those niggly technical questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Good luck with your application. And uh, just a reminder that all of the sessions have been recorded and they will be made available on the Trade Victoria website. So you will be able to recap anything that uh, isn't quite clear or if there's a session that you missed. I'm delighted to have had you with me for uh, the past five days. I look forward to seeing your application and um, good luck. Have a good weekend. Keep well. Goodbye.